So because you've been covering AR for so long, um, and my audience just, you know, we're, I'm, I'm sure some of them do follow AR, but most of them are mostly VR. But as we're going to talk about later in another video um, continuing this, AR is coming to VR, but there's also uh, optical see-through AR, which you're mostly, I think, you mostly focus on. So what are a lot of the things you've just seen or realized over the years covering this topic? Okay, well, let's, let's, I want to start a little bit, yeah, give you some background information, a few key terms and why things are so important. Uh, one thing I do on my blog a lot, my blog's all about explaining why. I don't just sit there and bash, I don't believe in bashing things. I don't just say there, this is junk. Uh, if it's junk, I'll say it's junk, but I'll tell you why it's junk, and I'll tell you what's wrong with it. Um, but yeah, we're, as I talked about earlier with respect to, um, uh, Pico projectors and, and and whatnot that, you know, I kind of found that uh, everybody was saying this was going to exist or must exist. Um, there was a big gap between what happened, by the way, in the Pico projector market is every time we turned around, one day they said they needed 10 lumens and a certain resolution. And the next year they needed more resolution, more lumens. And then soon after that, they needed more resolution and more. So every time you go back to them, they always needed more and more. And you started to realize that they they probably didn't know what the market was either. Mm -hmm. And what you kind of realized was the market was never going to happen. There's actually some really bad use models. And that's I talk a lot about in AR is that use model is just everything. How are you going to use this thing? You know, I think a lot of people are building these things are thinking this is for somebody else. Uh, you know, they're not really, they're building for a mythological person that doesn't exist. So a use model is all about figuring out how is somebody really going to use this product. Anyway, so anyway, back to back to the beginning. Almost everybody talks about Ray-Ban sunglasses. I, I This is my one of my more fundamental concepts. The people, I say, people start with Ray-Ban as their model, they draw their Ray-Ban and they say, yeah, we need Ray-Ban sunglasses with the image quality of an OLED 4K television. And what they end up with is HoloLens. And a lot of times what people publish is their video feed. For example, here's a video feed from HoloLens. And this is what a HoloLens 2 actually looks like. And that's one of the, I think, most realistic pictures anybody's ever taken of, of HoloLens. I, I went through a lot of effort. To get something that looks pretty close to what it is to the eye. So, um, and I'm not going to go through all of these, but there's a lot of chat. AR is not as close, and you know, I, I'm also known in the industry as a skeptic. Um, um, so I'm not as uh, it's it's a really hard problem, and and I'm skeptical in a lot of ways because um, it's there are a lot of challenges and. If one guy fixes one of these problems, let's say somebody put in my hand a perfect display. They solve micro LEDs. It's 4K by 4K, brighter than all get out, doesn't consume hardly any power. Now you got 19 things to go. <laughs> you knock one off the list, you still got a lot of big problems to solve, like what optics will work with it. Um, that's a big problem. So I tend to look through a lot of things. Everything, you know, cost is always an issue for people. If it's too expensive, nobody, you know, you're not going to get in a volume. And by the way, most of these challenges are related to the holy grail of a high volume market. Um, what drives a lot of this is FOMO or fear of missing out. And you've got the, if there's any overriding factor, it's the, um, it's the, it's the vision of the iPhone. I think uh, does everything. Meta has no platform. And I think Meta thinks the only way to intersect and to get on board is not to try to recreate a cell phone, but they've got to get the next big thing. Okay. Apple, on the other hand, who's the other mega player in this game, sits there and may or may not believe it. I, I tend to think Zuckerberg believes it. I think he's a true believer. But in the case of Tim Cook, He's told he should believe it, that this has got to be the next big thing. I think Tim Cook is a little more leery. And what he's like is, hey, we're a trillion dollar plus company. We can afford a few billion dollars just to protect our flank. So I think he's doing kind of a rear guard action.
to protect it. He can afford to deploy a bunch of design teams just in case uh, Zuckerberg's right. <laughs> um, so there's a little bit of that going on. But my point here with all this list is not to go into each one individually so much as to say there are a lot of challenges. Uh, everything from, you know, is it bright enough? Uh, do you want eye relief? I, by the way, eye relief is how far the, the last lens in the optics is from your eye. Yeah. Turns out you need to have about 25 millimeters of eye relief to wear glasses. The most uh, the ordinary glasses, there'll still be weird frames that won't fit, but typical glasses will fit if you have about 25 millimeters of eye relief. As you, as you get the 20, you might be able to use the glasses much less. You're now into inserts if you want to do vision correct. And that, that becomes a real um, dividing line. And then you're getting into, and oh, by the way, the big thing here, as I said with this, is that this, is, this list is talking about mass market, like go after the iPhone yeah. uh, type market. you got to solve all of these. Now, that's not to say there aren't some really interesting markets in, in AR if you're going to go for more niche things. Like there's, a, you know, I look at, I'm working for a, a company that's, involved in military applications, there are definitely some there. Uh, there are medical applications they're getting that are definitely there. There are also a lot of industrial, the so-called enterprise applications, like you're in a showroom at, at Amazon, or you're in a uh, warehouse at Amazon, you're maybe a, truck, a UPS driver, uh, where you just need infor a little bit of information. And, and by the way, almost every one of these applications, it seems to have a real use model is that it, it involves hands-free operation. Right. Um, now, one thing I think about is many of these models also need to be bright enough that you don't, that you can kind of use them indoors or out. Um, even if, you know, like uh, they talk about, you know, if you're in, in some of these bright environments, like it magically talks about a uh, operating room. Well, if an operating room is going to be really bright, because to make help the guy see, then your display has to be bright so it'll stand out against it. So, I mean, there are just a lot of problems to solve. And so the point of this list is, is not, uh, as I said, it's everything from power efficiency. And I'll talk about a few uh, in detail in a bit. But it's a hard problem. Um, yeah, as I was saying, um, one, one point I like to make is I think 40 pixels per degree or 1.5 arc minutes per pixel is kind of one of my big numbers. I think if you go lower resolution than that, a, things look chunky, and you have to make your text so big that it actually gets slow to read. It slows your reading speed because you your eyes want to move at a certain speed, and you can. And and the next thing is, if you get higher resolution than that, you're more after bragging rights than practical purposes. The other thing in AR, very very important. Usually in in, in see through AR, our background is whatever you see. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of um, finesse is lost. You know, if you're doing 60 pixels per degree, but your background is whatever you see behind, you see looking at, you're not really going to see that fine detail. But uh, I, so I tend to feel like 40 pixels per degree is a real sweet spot. More than that, you're, you're kind of spending money that will be almost unnoticeable. I mean, it can be noticed if you really put up the right thing. But um, 40 pixels would be kind of that optimum le level. Of course, you guys want your 140 pixels per, you won't want 140 pixel horizontal field of, you know, it's like, and, and you think you're being smart because somebody says, oh, I want 180 field of view. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, God, we'll put two displays up there and we'll cant them in or we'll get a curved display and curved optics and all. Well, the problem we have in AR is they're trying to wear this stuff for long periods of time. Yeah. The AR guys, it's like, it's all they can do. I mean, our problem is that r right now your glasses are almost too heavy. Mm -hmm. And you want to put, uh, you know, like when, um, uh, as we sometimes say that uh, uh, Meta, you know, with the, fa with the Facebook and Ray-Ban sunglasses, you know, they put all the display they could afford, which was none. Uh, <laughs> you know, they added audio only and some cameras, which are light. But it's actually almost too heavy to wear. It's it's on the heavy side. If they put a display in there, it would absolutely be too heavy to wear. And that's a big mistake I see going. I see a lot of things that are made to cosmetically look like glasses, 
that would be a total pain to wear. Right. Uh, my glasses are about 30, 50, uh, are about 23 grams. These are fairly lightweight, high index plastic glasses. That that's really comfortable. But you start getting to 50 or 60 grams, that starts to really weigh. There's, it turns out that your ears are cartilage, your nose is cartilage, doesn't like to support much weight. And so you really got to keep your weight down. And and you're not going to get there. Um, you know, then you end up with cables or battery. You don't have any. There's no margin for that. So that's one of the un, other unrealities I see happening all the time. Uh, you see it a lot with the bird bass and all. They're talking about that. But anybody will tell you who want you know the end reels. And there's like a dozen, a couple of dozen now of these bird bath optics. They all stick out from your head about an inch. They look good. They always shot. You always shoot the picture shooting straight on. If you shoot a side profile, then it looks like it's sticking out there about an inch or two. And all that weight is now cantilevered onto your nose. And so much of the weight of the glasses is all front heavy. But even if you do that, you can't really move much back to the ears because they'll start hurting. So you start having to go to headbands and all. And these things usually have cables out the back. So there's no battery up there. There's no processing up there. As soon as you put a battery and processing on your headset, you're either supporting a lot of weight on the nose. You're trying to now you're trying to go with gigantic nose pads and all, but pretty quickly you're into what I call the bustle, where you're going to move the move all the processing and stuff to the back. Um, so this is one of the things. Uh, there's a guy called Thad Starner who's at the University of uh, Georgia Institute of Technology, and he did a presentation at one of these conferences a few years ago, and one of the points he made was how silly everybody was going for wide field of view. In the AR world, and this is where I don't think there's been a, a, a rational distinction made or a, a common understanding. People will say they do, but when I see it in the press and whatnot, they just get all blended together, uh, much together. But VR, you're trying for total immersion. You're trying to isolate the real world. In AR, you're trying to augment the real world. You're trying to do something on top of the real world. And a point he likes to make, which I think is pretty good, and Thad Starner has been using like uh, AR type stuff since the, I think the 90s. He's continuously worn stuff. Uh, but you know, he tries to make is that if you go to an IMAX, uh, the the field of view is between about 50 and and 55 and about 115 degrees. If you go to your typical movie theater, like Simpty Opti uh, Simpty Optimum Viewing of a is about 30 pit. Um, um, 30 degrees, and then recommended theater viewing is around 45 degrees. So that's that's really into movie theater stuff. So this whole thing of getting to 110, 120, that's probably fine for video games, but most of that's really for immersion and not for viewing. Something else he did, he said, this is a study they did that's kind of interesting. He said, if you're down here, if you look at this, this is kind of comfort, increasing discomfort over 30 minutes. So if you, let's say you're using whatever this thing is for 30 minutes. If the action and stuff you're looking at starts to get, what they did is they started moving stuff, like text particularly. If you start moving stuff out of the field of view, what happens is as you get much beyond the 20 and taking off fairly fast, that it gets you get increasing discomfort. So really, if you're going to do any kind of task, like reading something or doing something, you actually want to keep the content within 30 degrees and ideally more like 20, 25 degrees. If you start going outside that, let's say I put text up there that's making your eyes are going to get sore because it's really hard. On, most what people don't realize is, is when you use a computer monitor, you turn your head. When you use an AR set, that doesn't make any sense. You turn your head. And the, and the and the display moves with you, but most people are not going to move their eyes more, left or right more than I mean the total extent is about thirty degrees. Matter of fact, your eyes cicades and it kind of jitters around in there. But once you get past about thirty degrees uh, with a computer monitor, you're going to turn your head. You're not going to just move your eyes. And so this kind of is a recognition of that humans aren't really built to 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 constantly see stuff. But we used to. The saying we always had in displays and stuff is your peripheral vision is getting eaten by the tiger. The whole purpose of your peripheral vision is to notify you something's happening so you can turn your head and bring your 
high resolution vision, because only the center of your vision is is sharp, uh, bring that to bear on 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 the tiger that might eat you. Uh, another thing we like to say is that there's a lot more things will attack you around the air. Therefore, you can't look up very well, but you're very good at looking down because lots of bad things happen if you don't look down. Like you trip over things, you step on snakes, uh, animals that are running along the ground. So human vision is very biased downward, and it doesn't like to look sideways much. Your peripheral vision is very sensitive to motion. Going back to don't eat, you know, there's something moving in the bushes that might eat you. Uh, turn your head and walk at it. But these are all kind of primordial realities and built into the vision system. Something you may tell, and I'm spending too much time on it. Well, what, what, one thing I wanted to bring up when you're talking about uh, the vertical, FO, kind of like the vertical FOV of what you want to see um, in general, is I'm hearing a lot, of, uh, especially more recently, talks about, you know, you, you were saying earlier that uh, VR people, they're all about, oh, we need the w- wide FOV, right? They always talk about that. But one of the, the studies keep coming out is that the vertical FOV, even for VR headsets or even pass-through AR, is actually way better for people and, and comfort. And I think it goes along with a lot with what you're saying. Like, yeah, humans are more likely to look up and down because, you know, you won't step on something rather than, you know, you're not, yeah. not doing... This. Yeah, yeah, I tend to think that they've gone a little overboard. Like, how, my Magic Leap 2 actually went more vertical than horizontal. Um, that may be going a bit overboard. But, yeah, there's definitely a... I tend to feel like a good compromise would be 4 or 3, about 4 wide to 3. Like, 6 by 9 is wide. Right. You need more. You're going to run out of space um, or kind of in your normal eye moving around use. You'd be better off to have it a little wider. You actually want most of it below you, though, because, as I said, your eyes, you don't tend to look up much, Mm -hmm. but you do tend to look down. You can swivel down. Uh, But, yeah, there is a tendency to do that. The other reason why they want to go wide is not because you really need to see it. It's that you just don't like the cutoff effect. It's like like you feel you see the chop. And I think part of it is really that it you see an image and it chops off. And that's distracting because that brings your attention to it. That's something that you can it it's not that it it's not that you need it, it's that it makes you feel kind of bad. Now in the yeah. case, this is also though very different in AR. VR, you provide everything. In AR, you want to provide next to nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and this will become a big factor when we talk about um, um, uh, micro LEDs, micro LEDs is that they need to be a typical, you actually see the micro LED people now specking like an average pixel value, which is the percentage that a pixel is on. Matter of fact, I've known this for decades. Uh, they've known in, in movies, typical movie is, if you measure the average pixel value, the brightness times the, the uh, you know, each pixel, the average pixel is only on about 20 to 25%. Um, and that's movies are actually pretty dark. Well, in the case of AR, that number moves down. If you're looking at a scene, think about it, and you want to see it, the whole idea of AR is you should see the background. You're trying to augment or add on top of the background. Your average pixel value could be 10% or less. And the other thing that happens with AR is, I like to say, is all subtlety is lost. Um, you're, you don't know what your background is going to be. Your background might be busy. Your background might be bright. Subtle color changes are undependent. You can't depend on them. Undependable. You have to have fairly significant changes. So generally, you just turn the dang thing solid on. So there's a tendency to be nothing or a fairly solid color. Um, and and you know most. I think most AR applications. It's not about looking at a move. You're no AR. Anybody. And this is the problem I have with like the the. You know, people talk about the OLEDs, the micro OLEDs, the bird baths, the end reels, and similar. Um, the problem is, yeah, they give a pretty good image, and they might be, a, they'd be a lot. You, as soon as you want to watch a movie, they give you a little cover to cover them up, and there's some problems with that whole modality. But here's the thing: most normal AR or the AR that people are going for, like particularly the industrial environment, you're a lot of times your goal is just turn this screw X. X marks the spot, or here's a wire. Here's 
here's where in three space this wire should run. You're Boeing and you're designing an airplane or your mechanic working on a car. The idea is you look out and it tells you if it with all the slam and everything where where to do something. You don't want a lot of other stuff on there. As it, actually, Thad Stunner in one of his presentations shows the lousy inner user interface. And one of the big things it does is it covers up the person's hands. So you look down and you don't you can't see your hands. So you're trying to work on something, but you can't see the hand. <laughs> it's pointless. So good AR, good user interface in AR is actually pretty sparse um, for, for the known app for the known uses of it. It's really sparse. Um, we get into the games and stuff, but you know, once again, those have all failed because nobody's paying this kind of money to get to get to the level that you need to to play a good game is so expensive still that it, that it's really a non-market. That's the thing that Magic Leap found out the hard way. So anyway, but yeah, it, 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 you think about it, we're going very, very, very sparse. Well, since we're sparse, we're not going to cut off the field of view either. That cut off the field of view is because you're putting up a solid image. Right. And so I think people are very, there's so many of these crosses, which is a good re reason to talk to you about it, because you're so much more VR focused than me. But there's so many more, there's, there's so many differences. People think it's a display that's on your head. Yeah, but... That's kind of where everything, and then everything's different. <laughs> you know, it's a display in your head, but you, in your case, you want that immersion. You don't want the image to cut off. You want to, you want little blinking red lights over here to make you turn your head. Okay. In the case of V, in case of AR, there's some use for that. Like in military, they might want to say, hey, there's a, uh, a gun flash over here, but you could almost get away by blinking a, a red LED over there just to tell you to turn, once again, to turn your head. Right. Um, in VR, I'm sorry, in AR, a lot of times you need the thing to be clear. Everything but the the thing you're supposed to touch, the thing you're supposed to do, you got some text to read because you need to bring that up really. You're not doing photographic. If you're trying for photographic quality in AR, you're doing something uh, because you, you really don't, I don't think you really understand the app. And I, I had this problem, by the way, I was working in, in between here, I worked on a heads up display. And I couldn't explain to this. I was the uh, CTO and co-founder. I could not explain to the CEO that it's not going to be a great application for doing photographs because he wanted to, you know, a, a, you know, a person would call and a picture would pop up. And I'm like, yeah, the problem is we're going to be back. Our background might be 10,000 nits of bright sun, right. <laughs> brightly lit concrete. You're not going to be able to see who the guy is except at night. Yeah, that's the way it is. Maybe this is a, you know, I, I, maybe we could, I think we've talked a lot about the issues with optical AR, but I think it would maybe be really cool, um, since we were kind of segueing into it a little bit anyway, if we can skip more to talking about like pass through AR a little bit more, because we're seeing a lot of that, um, in general, just the industry seems to be obsessed. Like I, I, I know coming from my side, all the VR stuff, they're all, hyped about AR. Um, so maybe we, we can go and talk about like why, I mean, Apple is clearly their first headset is apparently it's going to come out or be announced in January. Um, and it's going to be a pastor MR headset. Uh, Meta Cambria comes out like September, October. It's going to be hugely focused on mixed reality, um, pastor AR. And there's some other companies like Lynx, uh, ByteDance who, who bought Pico and there's some other companies as well. So, Maybe we can skip to that and talk about that. Okay. Um, let me do one more slide here because it kind of relates, and then we'll jump jump forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, as I say, when we, um, when we do AR, VR displays, when we do a VR display, we have the thing right in front of the head. We have your thing, and then you put your cheap optics. In the case of AR, we take a really small display and we put it in a very inconvenient place, i.e. we can't put it in front of your eye because we put it in front of your eye, we block the view out. So now we have to take a really small display and put it around the side. Plus we have to be really low in power. Plus we, you know, all these things. Um, we can't match the image quality as we sometimes say VR brings us black with it. Yeah. So that's, uh, uh, so with VR, you have your own black. And with AR, our black is whatever you see. 
And so it's a, it's really a whole kind of different game in terms of how small a display is, where it's located versus the VR space. So if you give me just a second here, I'll flip forward to our, um, I have to jump in the presentation. So. Perfect. 